Welcome. In this video, we're going to go over game setup and the basics of how to play the DC deck building game Rebirth, published by Cryptozoic Entertainment. In this game, you and your friends will take on roles of members of the Justice League, the goal of defeating supervillains before time runs out to save the city. If you haven't played a deck builder before, basically you're going to start with a basic set of cards, purchase additional cards to make your deck work better, and hopefully defeat the main goal before time runs out. For this example, I'll be setting up as a two-player game. At the end of the video, I'll show you how we can convert that over to a solo play for my playthrough video. First thing we'll do is take our superheroes and give them a shuffle, and then deal each player two cards. So for player one and player two. So from these cards, we'll pick one of these to be our character. So we have the choice of Aquaman or Superman. Each time you play Superpower during your turn, target player may put a card with cost four or less from their discard pile on the bottom of their deck. And once during each of your turns, plus one power for each villain in your space. So we'll choose to play as Superman. And for player two, our options are the Flash and Wonder Woman. So the second time you play an assist card during each player's turn, target player draws a card. And at the start of each of your turns, you get move two. Pay five move, target player draws a card. So we'll choose the flash for player two. We'll then get our standees. Put them to their side. We're constructing their starting decks for each of those. Each character is gonna get six punch cards, which provides plus one power, which is basically the currency for buying additional cards or defeating villains. Then we'll go through and each character gets three run cards, which provides move two. And lastly, each character will get a helping one helping hand. So it has an assist range of zero, provides plus one power, target player may move their character one space. And we'll set those to the side until we're ready to go over how to play the game. Next on the list is getting the threat track and placing that in the center of the play area. On one side is for cooperative play and competitive on the other side. In competitive play, basically the players will make teams and keep track of their villains defeated. And whichever team defeated the most victory points worth of villains will win the game. We'll be setting up for a cooperative play. So this keeps track of the threat and the additional abilities that becomes effective as the game progresses. And we have a threat level token. So we can put that on there to make sure we're aware of how far in danger we are. As you can see, your team has three rounds to defeat a fifth supervillain or lose the game. So by the time the fifth supervillain comes out, we've got three rounds to make sure we've defeated at least five. So we'll place that out, the token on zero. And for the rest of setup, we'll consult the scenario packs. We're starting with scenario one. So no huge spoilers here because you'll be seeing this shortly. They do come in resealable packs, so you can continue play. So the first scenario is the Proving Grounds. The gang's all together and needs to learn to function as a team. Justice League's greatest foes have come to town to see if you are truly the world's greatest heroes. Can you defeat five supervillains before time runs out? Place a secret card face down next to the threat track. So here's the secret card. We'll put that down there. And we'll flip this over to see how to set up the board. It shows us our locations and whether they're going to be on side A or B. You can see we have Arkham Asylum and the Daily Planet will be starting on side A. And then the Batcave, City Hall, and Police Station will be on side B. So out of the seven locations, we'll start with Arkham Asylum, which is going to be on side A. Pay two power, move target villain one space towards this space. And you can see it's side A here, or flip it over for side B. Next on our list is the Daily Planet. This will also stay on side A. At this location, discard a card, reveal the top card of your deck, and you may discard it. Then we need the Bat Cave on side B, so we'll flip it over. And on this location, we'll take the Bat Cycle stack and place it here. And City Hall, side B. We'll use the flight stack. 
And the police station, also on side B, getting the bat signal. So we'll give these a shuffle. They'll get placed around the board, starting with location one, two, three, four, and five. And then we will place the destination tokens on those, just showing those for the game. One, two, three, four, and five. So the police station down here gets the bat signal stack. Each basic stack of cards has five cards of the same type. So for the bat signal, see it's plus one power. We can put a hero from your discard pile on top of your deck. There's a super villain in the lineup, put it into your hand instead. So these will be available for purchase at that location. And you can see down here, their cost is three. City Hall, we need the flight stack. So we've got those five cards here. You can see it has an assist with a range of three. Plus one power, place your character on any space, and it also has a cost of three. And lastly, the Bat Cave needs the Bat Cycle. So those five cards. Here you get to choose one. You can get move two or plus two power. Also a cost of three. And over here in the bottom left corner is victory points, which is not used on the cooperative mode. So the bat cycle is for purchase there. Next, since we're doing one to two players, there's a minor adjustment to the threat track. We need to add threat A to level two. So we've got all these threat tokens. So we'll look on the back of those, looking for threat A. And we can see there, it's gonna have ongoing villains cost one more to defeat. So as more super villains go up, the track goes up. And when we get to level two, we're gonna have two effects, a one-shot ability and an ongoing effect. Since it says add, we're getting both. If it said cover, we would actually replace that. So we'll put that out there. And then it gets to building our main deck. It tells us to add two super villains to stacks two through five. So we'll go through making our main deck of cards. So we'll gather all the cards to make up the main deck. In here we have equipment, superpower, hero, and villain cards. Just the makeup of the cards. and. Once again, we have the cost, and in other modes, victory points. This does have a special ongoing ability, so when this card would get played, it would stay out in the field until you used it for its secondary ability. Superpower, same way. Cost, these, these are cards for upgrading your deck. Heroes, villains do work a little bit different. When they come out on the board, they will move around, and if they're in the same space as you, they will attack you on your turn doing that ability if they make it to their destination. So this number here refers to destination on the board. So when he gets to that spot, he'll be attacking every hero on his turn. And of course, when he's defeated, so he'll take at least seven fight to defeat. And then reward will be listed below that. So we'll shuffle this big deck of cards together. Then we need to separate it into five equal stacks. So there's 84 cards in this, so we'll have four stacks with 17 cards and one stack with 16. So we'll move our heroes to the side so you can see how this works. So we'll set each of these stacks on the table here. So we have five basically equal stacks of cards. Then we will go through our super villain cards and add two to stacks two through five. So we've got our super villain cards. We'll give them a shuffle and put two of each in stacks two through five. So skipping one, two here, two here, and two there, and two in the back. And then we will shuffle those together. Putting stack five on the bottom. Take the next stack, give it a shuffle that stack on top of the other one, and repeat for the remaining three decks of cards. Stack number two. And then stack number one. 
will get placed on top of the main deck. Then the space in between each of these main locations will create a lineup, placing cards in between, creating another location. Take the stack of weakness cards, put them next to our main deck. And now we're ready to begin. So we'll move our character cards back over here. Each character will take their starting deck and give it a shuffle and draw five cards. So good shuffle, starting hand of five. We can see we've got two move twos and three power. And then for the flash, Drawing five cards, getting four power into move. So before we get to how the cards interact with each other, let's go over turn sequence. Step one, at the start of your turn effects happen. Step two, villains at their destination or sharing a space with the active player's character attack only the active player. Resolve them in the order of your choosing. So if there's multiple villains, you're going to get attacked multiple times. Step three, villains not sharing a space with a character move one space towards their destination by the shortest path. Case of a tie, move the villain clockwise. Step four, add the top card of the main deck to the lineup slot with the fewest cards, including villains. There is a tie. The lower slot number wins the tie. Step five, we'll play cards from her hand. And step six, you total up your move and power. Use your move to travel around the city, buy cards in your space with combined cost less than or equal to your power total. As soon as you buy or gain a card, place it into your discard pile, unless instructed otherwise. You may play additional cards even after making purchases or moving. So basically move and power is going to be banked and you'll use them as needed. And then on the very first turn of the game, we will skip steps two through four of the turn sequence. End of turn. Announce that you are ending your turn. Your turn is now over. Place any cards remaining in your hand into your discard pile so you can't continue to hold on to cards to have a super turn in the near future. Three, resolve any at the end of your turn effects. Four, place all cards you played into your discard pile. Any unspent power is lost. You'll draw five cards on step five and then the next player starts their turn. You do not shuffle your discard pile, make it your new deck just because you have no cards in your deck. Wait until you must draw, discard, or reveal a card from your deck, then shuffle your discard pile, and it becomes your new deck. So to go through each of those steps, step one, start of your turn effects happen. There's none of those on the board. We're skipping steps two through four. Step five is playing cards from hand, and when you start the game, you're off the board, so you can come in the city at any location. You can see we have three power to purchase with, and we've got four move. With three money, basically we can buy any of the basic cards, Bat Signal, Flight, the Bat Cave, and we also have Lois Lane. And being Superman, he's gonna fly into town at that location, so now he has access to purchase that card. So we'll use our three power there. This card will then go into our discard pile. We also have four move we could use. And he'll just move four spaces. One, two, three, four. And now he's ending his turn. Any cards in her hand would go to her discard pile. We check for end of turn effects. There are none. Cards we played will then go into the discard pile. We'll draw five cards. And then the next player will start their turn. So there's no start of turn effects in play. There's also no villains in play. So step two and three won't happen. Take the top card of the main deck and put it in a lineup slot with the fewest cards, which will just be the areas in between the main locations. So since this had zero, we'll place that there. And then he'll play cards from hand. And he was fortunate enough to get four money. And being the flash, he starts with two move. So he's got four money and four move and he can come in wherever he wants. We'll have him start in here on this location, spending four money to purchase Simon, put that in his discard pile. 
And then with this and the special ability, he's got four move, and he'll just run into the bat cave. So announcing turn in, no cards in hand, no end of turn effects. Played cards go to discard pile, and then draw five cards. And we'll continue doing this. Where the game gets interesting, we'll go ahead and take a look here. There's when villains come out. So we'll say this was the next card on top of the stack. It would move to that location. Players would go through their turns, and on the next turn, you can see he wants to go to location four, which is right here. So with no character on it, he would freely just move to that spot. If you want to keep him trapped up, you place a character on him, and then it will attack that character. Or if that character had enough fight, they could defeat it and obtain the reward. Now the difference when supervillains come out, we'll see, well, there's Deathstroke. So when supervillains come out, they're going to immediately attack everyone on the board. And what they do when they get to their location, he also wants to go to location four, so the city hall is very popular. So when he attacks on that location, in addition to attacking all characters on the board, he's also going to damage that location. So you'll put a token on that. And if any of these main locations gets five damage on it, they are destroyed. So you lose access to all their abilities. So you move everything off and put a little destroy token on them. And also, when supervillains come out, your threat level goes up. So there's a new ongoing ability. So you can see here, during step four, there are no supervillains in the lineup. You'll add an additional card to the lineup. So basically, you want to move through your deck quicker to make sure supervillains come out to annoy your day. And as each new supervillain comes out, threat level goes up. Each of the ongoing abilities below are still in effect. And you'll continue playing until you've defeated at least five supervillains, or you run out of time, in which case you lose. So since this is a cooperative scenario-driven game, there is a scenario log in the back of the book that you have permission to photocopy. So we'll keep track of your characters, signature cards you gain, and damage on locations will be recorded. So you've got potential for locations to come out that you won't have access to because they've been destroyed in a previous playthrough. You have two attempts at each mission. So if you fail the first one, you have a second try. And then if you fail on that one, you just proceed to the next scenario. And at the end of all eight scenarios, you'll tally up your points and see how victorious you are, or if you've been defeated. Each character also has access to three signature cards specific to them. So as you complete scenarios, you'll get access to additional cards to upgrade your starting deck as you continue to play. So if you're playing in solo mode, you go through the process for choosing your hero, and then you can pick a second one to be an ally. They will not come into play with a deck of cards. When you start the game, wherever you come into play, your ally will come in at that space with you. During your turn, you can spend your movement points to move that character around, so he can potentially go to an area and hold up a villain until you have enough strength to deal with him. And with that second character in play, it gives you the ability to play assist card. So on your turn, once per turn, you can put an assist card on that character card. Then on your next turn, you have to play this. So it does give you a way to play assist cards during a solo campaign. So with that said, I hope this was a good basic overview of gameplay. Stay tuned for my next video when I'll do a solo playthrough. And as always, I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, please click on the like button below and be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching.